Hey guys, TGIF, it's Friday, April 6, 2018. You're watching The Daily Mix TV by Hill Story Marketing. My name is Sean Patrick Hillman. I'm the CEO. So Walmart is expanding its modern day and oversized version of a vending machine, but that's going to come with a new addition. So the discounter plans to add more than 500 additional pickup towers to stores across the country, bringing the total to more than 700 by the end of this year. Now, Walmart had rolled out a limited test of 200 kiosks or these these pickup towers and apparently the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive so the response to this is suggesting that more than half a million orders have been retrieved since the chain first introduced them and customer feedback is showing that they want bigger lockers so based on that feedback the new towers will actually come with pickup lockers which will allow customers to retrieve much larger items like television sets. So it, here's what's going on. Yesterday, we talked about how Macy's is rolling out these Amazon style lockers for BOPUS, pick up on or buy online, pick up in store service. Now, why more retail chains aren't leveraging BOPUS to their advantage is beyond me. But when you put a kiosk like this into your store, it increases your revenues because it's tailored to the convenience of the customer and what they want. Remember, the customer is always right, guys. So in this case, Walmart took a 200 store test and is now literally quadrupling it because of the success of that test. Now, in Walmart's case, the pickup tower, which stands about 16 feet tall and about eight feet wide, greets shoppers at the store entrances. So you place your order online, uh, and then you get a barcode on your smartphone. When you go up to the digital kiosk, you scan the barcode, you're done. Process takes less than a minute. Now with this expansion into additional doors, pickup towers will be available to nearly 40% of the US population, according to Walmart. That's a big number. And when you factor in the reality that Walmart and Amazon have been having this war for the last couple of years, I think this is actually a really good step forward for Walmart against the e-commerce giant. So we'll see how this plays out, certainly how it affects revenue and profits for Walmart. But given the overwhelmingly positive feedback from, uh, from customers, and you can see it, just Google it, you can see it online. This is a really good technological innovation for a store like Walmart. I really do hope other retailers pay attention. Facebook's chief operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg, said yesterday that the company didn't know if companies other than Cambridge Analytica exploited users' data, according to a report from NPR. It also came out that Facebook asked hospitals and other medical groups about sharing patient data, including illnesses and prescription information, as recently as last month. So Facebook planned to match that data with its own user data to allegedly help hospitals determine which patients might need special care or treatment, but the collaboration hasn't gone forward given what's going on with the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Now, personally, if I were a hospital administrator, I'd be like, yeah, not gonna happen, guys, sorry. You can't even control your own data. What makes me think you're gonna actually adhere to privacy concerns? Facebook said on Wednesday that as many as 87 million user profiles were improperly accessed, almost twice the original estimate. And then CEO Mark Zuckerberg also stated on Wednesday that most of its 2 billion users had been exposed to data harvesting by markets or by marketers through a vulnerability in the platform search and account recovery functions, according to an interview in the New York Times. Sorry guys, but you know what? In the real world, you get fired for that kind of incompetence. And the fact that Facebook is a publicly held company makes this even more egregious. We'll see how this plays out next week once Zuckerberg is under the hot lamps of three different congressional committees that are investigating Facebook's business practices. Now, for a little bit of a uh, flashback Friday, wildly popular in the 90s, Movie Phone is best known perhaps for its famous Welcome to Movie Phone greeting parodied by Kramer in Seinfeld. Great. Well, I went to the 84th Street. That's where I always go with Jerry. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Movie Phone. If you know the name of the movie you'd like to see, 
Press one. Come on, come on. Using your touchtone keypad, please enter the first three letters of the movie title now. You've selected Agent Zero. If that's correct, press one. What? Uh, you've selected Brown Eyed Girl. If this is correct, press one. Why don't you just tell me the name of the movie you selected? Well, it looks like the 90s iconic movie phone is being acquired yet again. The parent company of Movie Pass, which is that all you can eat movie subscription plan, has said it acquired Movie Phone. Now, under the terms of the deal, Helios and Matheson Analytics, which is the parent company of Movie Pass, is paying Verizon $1 million in cash and $8 million in stock. Now, that's far less than the $388 million that AOL, which is now part of Verizon's oath operation, reportedly paid for Movie Phone back in 99. Movie Pass has about 2.5 million subscribers that pay $9.95 a month to watch one movie a day in theaters. It's a really good deal, really interesting subscription platform. Now, the combined sites will have much more scale and advertising opportunities, according to their CEO. Operationally, Movie Phone will be rolled into Movie Pass. So while <coughs> they may operate as two separate companies, the back end offices are going to be integrated. Now, according to their CEO, no layoffs will result from this deal because the focus is on growth and new hires for now. So, Movie uh, Movie Pass is putting together essentially a movie theater ecosystem for the consumer, all based digitally on your phone. So, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of this. If I had to venture a guess, I would say that this is only going to increase movie passes uh, power in the entertainment world which is incredibly important especially given that march's box office results were really bad so hopefully april's a little better for movie theaters we know may will be because it's the you know tent pole time of year you've got may uh fourth of july you may for memorial day then you've got fourth of july and then you have the all too important holiday season so we'll keep an eye on that one for you now richard branson's virgin galactic flew its latest rocket ship over California's Mojave Desert yesterday. It marked the first powered flight since the fatal 2014 crash of its original spacecraft. Quote, back on track, space feels tantalizingly close now, tweeted Branson, who one day plans to take paying passengers into space aboard the craft. Anyone willing to shell out $250,000 can purchase a ticket aboard Virgin Galactic. Problem is, we just don't know when yet that uh, passengers might get to see space. Lastly, according to TechCrunch, Apple is looking to overhaul its powerful Macintosh Pro platform after years of minor changes. Apparently, the company is looking to completely start over with the black trash can, but will likely keep the modular design. The tech giant says it will release the new Mac Pro in 2019, a full six years after the release. My name is Sean Patrick Hillman. I'm the CEO of Hill Story Marketing. I'm also the editor-in-chief of The Daily Mix TV. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.